guys, let's try this again. This is actually the fourth time I tried to do this video because my dumb ass keeps forgetting to turn on that microphone. Yeah, I know, or I know. You could do a voiceover. We don't want to. So yeah, that's all on me. So anyways, first off, funny thing happened yes, last night. My brother messages me and the message is, I'm starting to save empty water bottles. Right away, I knew what he was talking about. And he's all, this week I get to build, I'm going to be building a cutting stand. So he's now got the cutting bug. So that's kind of funny. I'm glad though. I'm glad he's enjoying a story that we got him. So that's kind of cool. And then, of course, I've got pepper in there. Uh, so today's actually not, we're not going to be talking about katanas. Yeah, I know, most of you are gone. Screw this shit, then. Nah, I'm back. Anyways, um, told you I had fencing foils that I had picked up, and I actually found them. So, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, when I was in college, um, they actually had a class, um, beginners in advanced fencing and so I took it, and it's actually really fun to do. Um, it's very energetic. Uh, you, you can only move in a straight line, forward and back, that's it. So, and then you, you do wear a helmet, you have a coat, and it zips up in the, from the back, and it's padded. And some wear two gloves, some wear one glove. Because normally you just do one glove that's handling the foil. This one's actually in the back. You can either flop it like this or some will just put it behind their back like that. And stuff. It's kind of like kendo. I know that's going to piss some people off because they'll go, it's nothing like kendo. Stop being so technical. It's okay. Um, because you have the helmet, you have chest protection. Um, the only difference is, there are differences. Like in fencing, you can only get a point with the very tip of the sword. Or the foil actually like um, and they have a something called a button and that's what a button that's actually not um, the type of button that goes on there's someone taped that on there as you can see um, now they got buzzers but ours I, I guess you could say was like European style fencing um, there, we didn't have any buzzers or whatnot but with the buttons, when you put those on, they fit really tight and then you take like a Bic lighter and you heat up the end and it shrinks around it. And once they're on, they're on. You need a knife to cut them off. But this one, that's so cool about this one. You see the rings right here? This is for a left or right-handed person. So your finger would go in there or you can put it in the other one. So that's what this is. It's a left or a right handed foil. So it's universal. Um, yeah, the wrapping will only go to right here and it's coming undone. So um, this is just plated steel and then the foil runs, screws into the handle. Um, normally it goes down to here and it's spring steel. These are all fencing foils of spring steel. Um, at the time <clears throat> when I took the class, um, the teacher said the best fencing foil blades came from Spain and Italy. Um, that could have changed by now because this was in the 90s. Um, so the grades of steel that we have now could have changed, I don't know. Um, it's hard to say. Fencing foils, uh, they're not really expensive. It depends on where you get it. They can be inexpensive, and then they can be really expensive. It depends on what you're looking at and what you're looking to get. Um, this other one is a yellow. You know, if you look at it, let me see if I can't hold them up. One is shorter than the other because I think this one broke. Um, and I'll... Uh, that's something I'll get into. But this is a right-handed only fencing foil. If I hold up there, you see 
kind of right here we have hash marks. And the reason being is, or actually it was on this side, you have hash marks in there. And the reason being is the way you hold this one is like this. And your thumb goes where those hash marks are. So that's how you hold this one, is like this. And then it wraps around here. It's supposed to help um, with a better grip and flexibility. Because you really, you can hear that. Now, a slap with the blade doesn't count. Like I said, it has to be the tip of the sword. It has to touch you. Um, and the way we're taught, I'll use this one because it has a button. When you get your opponent, you twist it. Because what it does is, yeah, it'll bend, which is fine, but it wraps around the clothing. Because if you touch and it goes like that, it's not a point. It has to stay on there. Um, and these, both of these, they all do. They have some padding. Not much, but they have enough padding in there to protect your fingers and stuff. But really, these, these guards don't move. So if it didn't have the pad, you would probably be okay. But it's good to have. It's real thick. It's only like this thick, so it's not really thick. Um, but like this one, being where it's broke on the end there, um, you're supposed to inspect these, um, every student, um, even if you're in competition for burrs, because that can get snagged on clothing, it could cut somebody, and you just take a file, file it off. Um, we had one in our class, and any one of us could go up and file the blade if we had to. Um, you check it for um, cracks in the blade, because these do eventually crack. It takes a while. Um, they're very, very, very springy. Um, because I have seen these break. Um, there were, have been, there were, we call, they're called duels, because that's what they were. Um, and what happened was, the blade was fine when they started, so it progressed throughout the class. But from the tip, right here, to about right about in here, if I remember correctly, it broke. It went flying across the room. So luckily it was a small class and no one was on that end of the room. Hi, Tomo. And uh, nobody got hurt, but we had to stop, change the blade out, everything. Because we had, they, were, they belonged to the college, so we had extra blade. Um, and you just, uns those ones, it's, um, you unscrewed the bottom, the pommel, and then you slid the handle off and everything, and you dropped the next one on and you just screwed the pommel back on. So it went clean through the handle. So it does happen. So they really stress on um, checking for cracks in your blade. And it's kind of funny because um, fencing was first started in middle to late 14th century. There is kind of like a gray area when it's specifically in those time frames. Like 14, I think 51 to 1471 is the range that they think it started. And it was a form to train the soldiers. And then it's another gray area. They say the early 19th century is when it became a sport. So, and it's an Olympic sport too. Um, like I said, there's a, like a gray area and there's no specific time frame. So, but... It's a really fun sport, and I actually recommend if you have a fencing school in the area, just go in and check it out. Um, even if they like offer like a one-day thing for free or whatever, give it a try. It's really fun. It's very energetic. Um, with fencing, you have to get three points. This is how we were taught. Three points, and you think, oh, that's easy. Just three? not that easy and there's no time out so once you get a point you get back into position again and then you start again there's no breaks now the way we're taught once one opponent gets two points you now this is where it kind of messes you up you switch sides so wherever side your opponent's on you take that 
apart. You take that side, and then they take your side. Because once you get comfortable with one side, if you switch it, now it makes it a little bit more difficult. And it does. It makes it more difficult. Now, the sucky thing is, if it's two for two, you go into something called sudden death, which means now you're in overtime. And I've actually had that happen to me. And believe me, you're exhausted after that because after wearing that coat, you're wearing the helmet, you're wearing the glove, and the room that we're in did not have central heat and air, and it was kind of like a really hot spring day. When you take everything off, you're covered in sweat. Yeah. And when you first take fencing, you will go home, and when you take a shirt off, you're going to have all these red lines across your body because everybody, everybody, you wind up smacking the person. And it hurts like hell, even with those coats on. It really does. I mean, I had red marks on my arm, on my chest. One person had it like right across their neck. It sucks. But after you learn how to do it, it's actually really fun. Um, the only thing I don't like is their coats. They have a collar. It's like this tall. So it's like it only comes to like right here on you. Well, when you put the helmet on, it comes down to right about here. And you have this little flap. Now that little flap, you're supposed to tuck it into your coat. A lot of guys, a lot of people don't because it just falls out. So it's pointless to put it there. Well, what happened on one occasion, um, two opponents were dueling. Well, her flap had come up on her mask just as a guy went to try and get a point. And she had moved a certain way and he nailed her right in the now, luckily, there's, like I said, there's a button on there. So good thing there's the buttons because sometimes they're, they're plastic or they're actually metal molded. Big ball in the end. But it did knock the wind out of her. So, yeah, you can get hurt um, fencing. That's why you, you wear the gear, you check your foil, things like that. But it, I, that was the most fun I had, you know, with dueling with people. So, like I said, if you have one in your area where you can just check it out or just watch, it's really fun. Um, nowadays, they have them really long where you can whip and get them in the back and it buzzes and stuff. Because we had, um, you have referees when you don't have that. And they stand opposite of you. So, I'm right-handed, so they'd be on the left side so they can see when you get a point. And then you have a judge who sits in the middle. So, and they move with you. The rest move with you. Um, that thing is when you do fencing, you cannot lift your feet off the ground. This is, now, like I said, this is how we were taught. You, you're not even supposed to take your heel off the ground. Both feet have to stay planted at all times. The only time they come up is when you move. Okay? So, because you have to. But on that, if you're stand still, you're supposed to keep both feet on the ground. Makes it, it actually does make it harder, too. <clears throat> but um there was something else oh I want to give a shout out to Scab at Choir Boys Cutlery saw his last um, video when he was driving and uh, I gotta agree if you get a jerk on your page or whatever someone just being a jerk I will com I will, um, commenting I will delete you if you are rude I mean, that just should go without saying. Now, especially if you're rude to anybody else's commenting, I will delete you. Um, in fact, today I deleted somebody because they were trying to, like, peddle, you might as well say, their own bullshit on my comments, and I don't go for that. I mean, it's like if anybody's, like, trying to start an online knife sword deal and you want help promoting it, Tell me. I'd be more than happy to help you. But what I don't like is when people try to sneak in there and do their, their own little bullshit. That's just rude to me. And it was like a link I didn't even know. So I don't even know if there was a virus attached to this thing. So yeah, anything like that, I will get rid of. But yeah, because I'm with Scab on that. People go, I never delete. 
any comments. I find that hard to believe anybody that says that. You know. I mean, every, we all get the trolls. I just ignore them. But if someone's like hating on somebody in my comments, you're gone. You know, you're just going to be gone. I won't allow it. Because I don't go for that. Hi, Tomo. She totally just took a dive off the table, too. That was funny. But yeah, if you guys don't know what Scab is from Cardboard Cutlery, go check him out. He's a really cool guy. He's got a great channel. So, but other than that, guys, that's all I've got for you. Like I said, if you're in the area and you have a fencing school, check him out. It's, it's really fun. You'll notice, too, if you watch European swordsmanship, you'll notice similarities between that and um, Asian swordsmanship. There's a lot of similarities to those. There really is. Um, there might be some slight variations, but they're, they're similar. And the reason being is because it works. I had a guy ask me why I collect swords. I said, well, because they, they have, this person has like, I don't know how many guns. He, wherever the gun show comes in town, he buys like three. I don't even think he shot all the guns he's had. So I asked him, do you have a knife? Do you carry a knife on you? He goes, yeah. I said, why? And he said, well, I need to use it. I said, yeah, because they work. Knives and swords have been around for centuries, and they'll be around even longer. And because they work. It's the bottom line. They work. They're a useful tool, too, sometimes if you're out camping. So That's it. Tomo's going to attack my camera now. There she is. Tomo. Hey. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay, Tomo. You want to say bye? Say bye, Tomo. Say bye. Say bye. And when I, when I tell people in the comments that she follows me all over the house, I'm not kidding. She literally will follow me all over the place. She is so attached to me. We're kind of glad we got her and her brother. We rescued them. Huh. Huh. You've been a sweetie. Both you and your brother. Okay, guys. See you all later. <laughs>